So this is our follow-up review to this, the KTM 790 Adventure R. Did a video, I did, did a piece on it a couple of months ago and yeah. I was off, off roading it in Wales at their new Sweet Lamb Complex. But the last couple of weeks, we've had the opportunity just to test it out here in the Lake District, which is just where the Knox HQ and factory is, um, and really get a handle on it, you know, outside of that environment, on the road, bit of off-road as well, and you know, what it's like to live with, I suppose. On road, I mean, what, in general, if you were to say, okay, look, we've ridden it on the road, what, what do you think of it? It's a good question. And um, first of all, I've got to say, Aaron, it must have been a real hardship for you to uh, disappear off to KTM's bespoke oh, testing it's, facility. Well, it's tough at the time. I can't say it? that I was at all jealous over that, not, not green in the slightest. Um, having said that, I, I guess we ought to take a minute just to appreciate where we are. We're always banging on about the lake dish, aren't we? But just look at this backdrop. Um, you couldn't think of a more appropriate place to be testing a bike like this, could you? No. Um, having said that, in terms of my off-road experience, it's obviously pretty limited. Um, we, we obviously went out to Spain last year and, and spent some time off-roading, and I think it's fair to say that I probably struggled the most. So I, I'm going to leave that kind of aspect of, of, of reviewing this bike to you. In terms of how I feel about this bike on the road, I think, and, and we've spoken at length, haven't we, in terms of, you know, what this bike is trying to achieve for its on, on the road type riding. And I think compromise is a word that, that's kind of been repeated quite often during the course of those conversations. And, and I, I'm not sure I wouldn't necessarily consider that to be a criticism, but I do think that trying to create that perfect balance between a bike that you ride off road, and I mean, really off road properly i mean i don't just mean bouncing up a curb i mean you know the sort of thing that you that you were doing uh, when you went to wales a, a month ago or six weeks ago um and 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 trying to marry that with a bike that's got really good on-road manners i think is a very difficult thing to do actually um but my lasting impression is it's very well mannered um mm. my, my first impression when i saw the bike sort of when i when i came to the factory and and saw it sitting outside was my goodness it's big it was, you know, when we when we talked about it at the NEC last year, it just didn't give me that impression of size. I don't know what it is about when you see bikes collected together, oh, sure. but you know, it, it, it just it didn't feel as its scale just didn't feel as great. And actually, seeing it stand alone in a car park, it's a big bike. It's, I, I was quite surprised by that. But what I found was when I rode it and manoeuvred it around, and we've been doing a bit of that this morning. Obviously, we're taking a few photographs and doing some videoing. It's very easy. It feels mm. very light at the front. Um, I'm not intimidated by the bike at all, especially given that, you know, frankly, it, it, it really is on pretty much knoblies. Yeah. Um, handles uh, in, a, in a way that is comforting. It's not, you know, it, it doesn't intimidate me at all. I, th I mean, I think for me, um, and what's interesting, obviously we, we've, got, we've got KTM's other 790 bike, the Duke that we're testing, uh, it, you know, at the center of it all is that motor, mm. that, that parallel twin. Um, it, it really is a great piece of kit. You know, it makes yeah. strong power, it makes strong torque. Oh, it's definitely a strong engine. Yeah. So I, I've gone around the houses a bit there, haven't I? But I, I think, <laughs> I, th I think, you know, my, my first impressions are very easy, very comfortable, not intimidating, easy to manoeuvre, and surprising in, in some respects, given what I think is physically quite a large motorcycle. This, and, and we talked about this when we saw the bike for the first time at the NEC last year, this was created through customer demand. So KTM's customer base said, build us a middleweight, off-road, biased machine that we can tour on, but we can absolutely smash the, the dunes, the off-roading, the, the lanes. And, and you know that's why this bike came to be. So to-, to, to Well, and to I think they've delivered on that. Oh, absolutely. That, and, and, a, a, without question. Yeah. And, and if I was to sort of summarize what I think of it, I, I think if you were to take that brief, what you've just said, about their customers uh, yes. saying, have they delivered on that? In my opinion, tick. 100%, big, 100%, big, I agree. big tick. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, those are my initial impressions, Aaron. So I guess you, you kind of, you've got a really good idea of what it, like, it rides like off-road. What are your thoughts about its on-road manners? First thing I'll say, I agree with you. When you come on to it, <laughs> You know, it is, it's a big horse. It's a, it's a substantial bit of kit, isn't it? It is, and, and I understand why. I mean, you know, this has got the longest travel suspension of any sort of, you know, bike in its class, 240 mil, yeah. you know, front and back. So, you know, you can't have that level of suspension and have a low bike. No. I'm, I'm sorry, the, you know, the two things are just not sort of compatible with no. one another. Um, so you have sort of got to get your head around that. There are a few 
you know, tricks here and there. I mean, you know, trying to sort of swing your leg over it like you would possibly a regular road motorbike is a bit of a bit of an issue unless you're superbly flexible. Um, or, or your inside leg is like <laughs> 40. Yeah, yeah basically. <laughs> But, you know, I picked up from one of the instructors, you know, how they were getting on it was that, you know, putting their foot on, and I'll, I'll put a clip in showing you how, we, how you do yeah, this, yeah. but... It's a common misconception, is it, with yeah. side stands, but yeah, actually, yeah. They can, I mean, it's a 200 plus kilo bike, it can easily yeah. take your weight as well, you just step oh, on the peg and off you yeah, go. But yeah, and it, it's, a, it's, it's a really robust motorcycle, you know, and, and actually, um, I have dropped it, you know, <laughs> I dropped it off a... I dropped it off a curb um, just outside my house because you know you're a bit off camber, blah blah blah, and you know because it is quite tall, and you know, and I know it's lighter weight in its class, it's still relatively heavy actually. And I, I think it's sorry. I think I think it's worth mentioning that 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 it is you know in terms of its seat height, it is tall. Um, I'm sure we'll, we'll we'll make reference and it'll come up in the details in terms of the the actual seat height. There is a lowering option with this bike, isn't there? But well, it's I, a lowering I, seat. Yes, a lowering seat. And it drops sorry. it 10 mil though. Is that all? Yeah. But I, I mean, obviously, what they have done, uh, which is similar to a lot of your kind of your motocross, your off-road bikes, is, is the seat is quite narrow. Mm. But even so, I mean, I guess I would say that I'm a pretty average height guy with a mm. fairly mm. average inside inside leg length. And when I'm standing the bike up completely straight, I'm on tiptoes. So I can understand why it would be easy, and generally, to be honest, it's normally me who drops bikes, which is... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, good, that good, being said... <laughs> <laughs> the good news is, it's like a ridiculously tough motorbike. Um, so I did crunch it, and I thought, my, um, I'm in trouble here. <laughs> and um, actually, all I've done is, is done a little bit of uh, damage on the handguard. Yeah. Well, of course, the, the other side of it being tall, and I hadn't quite appreciated this, but when you do get out on the road, you know, it's like you're on a in a Range Rover if you've ever sort of ridden in one, uh, driven in one of those. Yeah. You know, you have got a command of the road. You can see everything. Every or you feel like everyone can see you. You're big. You're bold. Yeah. And you know this. Well, no, I, 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 I can understand why people sort of get into this type of motorcycling because it is you have got some sort of like prowess on the road. Well, you know? And of course, the other advantage of a bike like this is you can stand on the pegs. Yeah. And one of the things that was interesting, we were doing some, we were doing some tracking shots and I'm following the car riding the bike and I'll stand on the pegs. You, your view is just incredible. You know, you're, you're really high up. You can see over the hedgerows. You can see what's coming. You know what's going on around you. It's perfect for that. One of the interesting things that uh, you note with these pegs as well, of course, if you sat on the bike, they're rubber. Yeah. But actually, when you stand on the bike, all the surround is made out of aluminium. So mm. you've got that fantastic grip, which is absolutely mm. perfect when you're yeah. doing off-road riding. Totally. That's my for how to off-road. Uh, very good. The, the other thing about the, the on-road capabilities, I think it's, you know, we've talked about the engine, it's, it, it's fast. We're going to put the, spe uh, the specs up in, in, in the screen. We've got 95 horsepower, 88 newton meters of torque, I think. 87 or 88, yeah. Yeah, around, yeah um, around that sort of torque band, it's all usable power. And it's slowed down as well, isn't it? That's it the other is, thing. Yeah. It's usable, like you say, it's totally usable. It's not, you know, rev, it's absolute, what's it's off. It's from 3,000 on up to seven, 8,000. It really does pull and pull Doesn't strong. It? The, the quick shifter works really well, actually. I'm a massive fan. Yeah, got, yeah I love that quick shifter. I'll be honest, it, it just, it, it work, it's up and down the gearbox as well, which is worth mentioning. Um, yeah. Some quick shifters don't do that. They go up the box, they won't go back down. It works really well for me. It really enhances the riding experience on any bike, frankly, but on something with a load of torque like this, all you've got to do is open the throttle, leave it constant and just bang through the gears. And I mean, it just floats along really nice. On the type of roads that we've, that we've been riding today um, in the Lake District, believe it or not, it's actually a really quick bike to ride, um, you, you know, and a nice bike to uh, in, in, enjoy this type of road. I mean, you know, riding this, these roads on my bike, it's just, hard work to yeah. be honest it's too hard it, the bike's too quick you can't sort of like get into a rhythm of it but this you know you do feel like you're just galloping over it all it you know soaks up all the lumps and bobs while it's got massive suspension yeah. it's not um it's not like a pogo stick you know it's no. actually it's pretty yeah it's bounce and rebound it's, it's, it's pretty strong it's pretty yeah. solid and I, th I think the other thing we haven't um, mentioned is the riding position and i think obviously that that it's part of the, having this raised ride height and you having a more commanding position on the bike, but that also lends itself to you feeling like you've got a really high degree of control mm. over the motorcycle. We've done a lot of switchbacks today, a lot of crests, a lot of hills, a lot of you know tighter turns. 
I, you know, at, at no point have I felt uncomfortable on the motorcycle. I felt like I really had a good grip of control of what's going on underneath me. And that is quite confidence inspiring. The other thing worth mentioning is uh, the display is very clear. Oh yeah. The only, um, the, the only slight drawbacks that I've noticed is obviously when we came out and road tested the bike this morning, we filled it up with fuel. I've got to be honest, the gauge doesn't fill me with a great deal of confidence. It just doesn't seem to know whether it's got any fuel in it or, or, it, or it's got a full tank or, or otherwise. Sometimes it's telling me the range is 100 and then it's 150. It, it seems a little bit unsure of okay. exactly how much fuel is splashing around it. And the other one thing I would talk about is the screen. And I know you had a little bit of a bugbear with that too. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, the screen, if you're using this genuinely on the road, you would 100% you would need to uh, fix the screen it's it's terrible did you say that there was an upgrade that you can yeah buy you can buy it. so yeah. you can fix it it's 80 quid you need the you need the touring screen you just buy the touring screen it's fitted to the 790 adventure um yeah 80 quid and that that should fix it but this particular screen i understand it from an off-roading point of view actually you'd be better off honestly just taking it off because what you find is the wind as soon as you get to about 60 miles an hour just fires it directly at either your chin in the lowest position or in right in the middle of your nose right. in the other position and you sort of feel like you been transported into the I mean, quantum realm or something. Yeah, it's, somebody's at warp speed. Yeah, you're it's like... turbulent air as well. I think that's the other thing. Sometimes, you know, you have to accept me like with a naked bike and you have to accept that if you've got no protection there, you are going to get quite a lot of wind blast. But it's it's how that wind hits you as well. Yes, it is. Yeah. And I, I think, and I'm kind of nitpicking in fairness, because I think we're, we're pretty much on the same page in terms of our overall impressions of the bike. But the other thing is the non-adjustability. Having mm. to take an Allen key and, undo, and that to me, I, I mean, I was kind of, I wasn't aware of that when I first read the bike. And I'm sort of grabbing this, trying to pull it up a bit more and it just won't do it, will it? So no. that's, the, that's the one thing and, and the fuel gauge. But aside from that, in terms of it's my overall impression of on the road, it's a very competent motorcycle, isn't it? There's it no is. doubt about it. And quite, and quite rightly, you said that it's robust. You do get that feeling with the bike that it, it does feel very, it, it'd be very hard to break it. Oh yeah. Um, and it, you know, it's been put through its paces, hasn't it? I mean, I can't yeah. say that that's necessarily what I've been doing, but you know, back and forth, up and down, you know, it just, it does exactly what you ask it to do every single time. I mean, one of the amazing things about it is, is and it's quite strange this, but you you can be riding really nicely on the road and, you know, sort of 70, 80, 90, whatever mile an hour you're doing. And then literally like what I did the other night, I turned up at this motocross track and then <laughs> bombed it around a motocross yeah. track, you know, and with absolute confidence and, you know, I suppose that's quite unique, really. I mean, that, that's where the bike like this comes into its own, isn't it? And, you know, having having something with that kind of dual capability. Yeah. As I say, you know, I, I think it's it, it would be it would be remiss of us not not to be making the sort of clear indication that there are some compromises. Mm. Um, and particularly if you're going to run the you run the bike on a Metzler Carew like this is on, you know, you're, you're never going to get that outright point to point performance that you might get off a more road bias motorcycle sure. but you know well, it as cuts a, off the contact patch doesn't it absolutely but like you say you can ride it to somewhere like you did the other night and wallop you're on the track and you're off road and you're on loose surfaces and you're jumping it and you're bouncing it and it does exactly what you want yeah. it to so um, we thought while we were out here we'd take the opportunity just to talk very briefly about the gear that we're wearing today well the gear that i'm wearing because i've done most of the most of the riding today and i've had the opportunity to use for the first time our new urbane pro shirt um i mean it's exactly what i expected it's fantastic it really truly is fantastic um i know we've had a hugely successful year with this product already and it's so nice for me to get the opportunity to go out there and use it in the real world so you know our, it's our brand new product c approved to level a it's um incorporates both your impact protection and your abrasion resistance into one shirt but you can wear it with a layer on top, so I've had a our, uh, Hayden denim jacket on top when it was a bit cooler earlier this morning, or you can wear it just like this on its own, and it gives you all the protection that you need. So in addition, I've also been wearing our brand new Richmond Mark II. So basically, I'm I'm a guinea pig today. I've been wearing all the new gear, Richmond Mark II. So obviously, these supersede our original Richmonds. They are now um, fully Kevlar lined. They also come with a micro lock armor for both the knee and for the hip. They're cool max stitch as well to keep the temperature down. And they've also got a little bit of a stretch sewn into them, a 2% elastine, which just gives them a really nice amount of flexibility when you're on the bike, just that extra stretch. And particularly trying to swing your leg over a bike like, 
a KTM. Um, it, it does make a difference, you know. And yeah, well, I think you could do the splits in them too. <laughs> well, I, don't ask me to do that, Aaron, please. All I can tell you is they're comfortable and they work and of course, they protect you. Yeah. And that, that's the foundation, really. Yeah. Well, well, this this new Richmond Mark II is actually uh, just received double A CE rating as well. So this is a genuinely really safe jean to yes, ride on a bike. Yes, 100%. And, and, you know, for years I've been wearing the original Richmonds and I thought they were great. Having said that, putting these on for the first time, it's a total different game. I mean, these are so comfortable. They're so, just like regular uh, jeans, really. Um, absolutely fantastic. I've been really, really impressed with them. Well, you, you, you and get... these, will be, these will be my jean of choice going forward. Uh, without a shadow of it. I mean, you get the best of both worlds, don't you? You get yeah. a jean that looks like a jean, that is sewn like a jean, uh, but it and feels like a jean to hand, but it's incredibly comfortable. You know, the, the foundation of what we're doing here is offering you something that protects you incredibly well, but it's going to work when you ride your motorbike. Um, and that's what, exactly what they do. I can only speak from my experience this morning, but so far, so good. They really are doing the job. Fantastic. Look, so all the links um, for the products that we've been wearing is in the description. So if you want to check that out, uh, go and have a look there. Um, so Mark, we should probably talk about the electronics on this bike. It's a massive feature, all these new KTMs, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah obviously it comes up on this beautiful TFT uh, five inch display. And I think that's really premium. And I think it's really, you know, smart. I, th I think, it's probably fair to say it, it probably should be there. I mean, if we're going, I guess we're going to touch on pricing on this bike, and it's quite an interesting area given you know what Yamaha are about. To, well, what they've just released with their Tenere 700. But yeah, I mean, in terms of in terms of how much they've thrown at the bike, electronics-wise, it's pretty impressive. Like. Oh yeah. So you've got switchable ABS, switchable traction, four rider modes. Oh well, yeah. So you got you got street, you've got rain you've got off-road and then you've got rally mode as well and obviously all of the uh, you know all of that changes the throttle response it changes the traction control yeah. and then actually within each of those settings you can then um, uh, play around with the amount of traction control uh, yeah. interference that you would have so sure. say you want to put it in rally mode which is the most aggressive um, you can then you know knock it back to eight or uh, or whatever, which gives you quite a bit of interference. So you can really tailor the bike. Yeah, to your own. And, and you know what? That I, I found that absolutely fantastic. Say, for example, you are out in in the middle of nowhere, right? And you're not that confident, and you're on your own. Yes. You don't. The last thing you want to do is drop it on an off camber thing yeah. because you know you're gonna to have to pick it up mm. and so you do you know or, or if you're beginning for example and you're coming out of a, of a of a corner off road you don't want to spin it up that is amazing you can literally just hold the throttle open yeah. and it'll just it enables you to to create the safety net that works for you right? yes ah oh, totally so yeah. that, i mean really that is personalized yeah it. i mean not only that but you've also got a bluetooth functionality on this you've yes. got, i think if I'm right, you can you can pair some sort of sat nav system to it. I think through KTM's yes. online assistance. I'm not sure how exactly how it works, but I know that there's some functionality there as well. So yeah. it does give you a full suite of electronics, doesn't it? I know we were just talking it off does. camera, but your preference might be to add a bit of cruise control and maybe some to grips. I think I, I would be inclined to agree. If you if you looked at certain competitors, I'm not going to say it, Aaron, but you know who I'm talking <laughs> about. Um, you know, it's standard. You know, yeah. it's standard, and 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 the price points are competitive. You know, we, you you do get used to having those things on certain bikes, and I think, again, whilst I would agree that it would be a nice feature to have a standard, I do also understand why it probably doesn't feature on a bike like this because it is, to my mind, more off-road bias than it is road bias. But if you are going to do what um, it says on the tin, yeah. It's an interesting one, isn't it? I mean, look, if I, if, I, uh, if I owned this bike, I know I would ride. I would probably put uh, more miles on the road than, than I do in my current setup. Because what I would do first is I would change the screen. I'd get a nice big screen. I'd, I'd keep the heated grips that have been fitted to it. Um, and, y y you know, it's a bit of a winter hack. It's yeah, a yeah. do it all, do yeah, it, yeah. you know, yeah. in all weathers. So on and so forth, and I just think, yeah, traction. Uh, sorry, um, cruise, cruise control. control would would just kind of complement yeah. that, especially but if you, you're going to smash out a load of motor. Well, I mean, I, I can tell you from my own experience riding similar, and I can only draw on my own experience of what bikes I've ridden that are similar to this. You know, having cruise, if you're going to go off and do a monster day of you know 500 miles plus, it's invaluable. Something we haven't talked about as well, styling. Styling. Well, do you know what? When I first saw uh, this at the show, I'm like, I'm really <laughs> not a big fan of a, the, the way that adventure bikes look. 
Um, I'm just not, just generally speaking. Having said that, I have to say, this adventure art has really grown on me. I actually really love the styling <laughs> of it. Maybe not from every single angle. No. I think at the front, it's quite tall and be, you know, whatever. But from every other angle, I, I love it. And I love the front mud guard. I, I'd actually be really pleased about the, the, the look of this. I, I, I genuinely would. I, I, like, I like where KTM go with their styling. You know, you, it's very, very obvious without the, you know, mentioning colours, the, the lineage of the, of, the, of the sort of range of bikes to do. You can see they're all part of the same family. I like, I like that kind of sharp nose. I like the styling of the lights. And it's no different with this. I think for me, because of what this does, there's a kind of undertone of functionality about it, if you know what I mean. Mm. Um, I don't think I'm not going to call it a beauty queen. Let's put let's put it that way. Uh, I don't dislike it, um, but actually, I mean, and again, we were having a conversation about this. My preference is the is the look of the road bias, oh, like the standard adventure. See, I would totally disagree with you on that. <laughs> Mine would be totally the other way. Yeah. For, for me, the road going versus. But it's very it's very anything. subjective, isn't it? At the end it of the is, day, yeah. you know. There are certain bikes that I know I like the look of, and you think are hideous. You yeah, know, so well. it, it, you know it's, it's horses, of course. So I guess all we can do is give our opinion. Yeah. But I, I don't dislike the look of the bike, and I do understand why it looks this way, and I think it works. Right, braking performance, um, off road, absolutely no problems. Obviously, the ABS is kicking in all the time, so you don't need it to be any more powerful. Basically, right. on road, it's, it's been a little bit of a different experience. I think. I mean, if. If I'm totally honest, and I'm probably nitpicking here, I'd want just that touch more power. You know, someone pulled out on me just before on, uh, I've probably recorded on the GoPro actually, and I just felt it could just need it, just a touch more power. Yeah. I, I, would I, you agree? Or? I would be inclined to agree. Um, I, I had a, on a similar experience when I rode the bike earlier this morning, and I think a tractor came out and the traffic was backing up, and I had to grab a kind of fist fall, and I just felt it could have, given me just a touch more bite but mm. again you know I would I, I, there's a caveat to that isn't it you know it's not a performance bike yeah it, it, you know I, I do think it's probably it's ample but just in those you know, desperate those, moments <laughs> yeah, in, in the odd situation where you might think oh I need to grab a little bit more I wasn't I wasn't overwhelmed with its breaking force but I think as I say for general day-to-day -day use it's going to tick the box and do the job yeah it's fair to say that the midway adventure market is uh, pretty fierce at the moment, Mark. Would you agree with that? I, I, well, that oh, it's becoming more fierce. Yeah, I mean, again, we, we've had we've had countless conversations about this, haven't we, in the recent past? And I think one of the points that um, that we were going over is actually it's a very interesting um, area, sort of mid middleweight adventure. You know, I mean, let, let's be honest, adventure biking has been dominated by BMW in yeah. truth. Um, you know, well, the figures back that the, fi the figures don't lie, do they? You know, G GS and GS Adventure, the top two best selling bikes, and have been for Gone year after out. year. Yeah. And then, of course, underneath that, they've also got F850 GS and they've got F750 GS, which are relatively new bikes, have just replaced their, their predecessors. And I think probably across that range from BMW, the 850 is this, this bike's closest competitor. Would agree, yeah. Um, but actually, I think what separates something like this KTM as you would also probably suggest with Yamaha's new 700 ter Tenere is it, they are more heavily biased in terms of their off-road ability. I, th I think, again, you know, I, I wouldn't say anything disparaging about what BMW's bikes can do off-road, but and they are very capable, but I do think th this is almost creating a, a, a new segment in that market, along with the Tenere, that new 700, which has been, you know, again, we've spoken about previously, which has been a long time I I in the making. They're almost separate from the other bikes because they are so capable off-road, um, and are more and a, a, a significantly more weighted in terms of how they perform off-road as opposed to how they perform on-road. Whereas the other other bikes in that marketplace, I think, are more biased to to, to on-road riding. 850 GS Mark, we're actually uh, hoping to get one of those over the next couple of months. I'll reserve judgment on that one until we actually get to ride it and do a bit of off-roading as well on it, but. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree I've not, with what you're saying in principle. I've not, I've not ridden it. Um, I think the reviews as a whole have been pretty positive on oh, that yeah. bike. Uh, I, obviously, I, I've, I've ridden and owned a, a 1200. Um, I know how good a bike that is on road. I, I, I couldn't tell you how good it is off road, but I think uh, yes, it'll be interesting to draw a comparison between this and the 850. I think the most direct competitor with this bike is the Yamaha 700 and uh, the Tenere. And 
the reviews that I've seen, it's a hugely uh, it's had a hugely positive response from from, from um, most people who've ridden it and published sure. online. Um, that I think would be quite interesting. But again, price point wise, they, they are worlds apart. Frankly, they you know, are, you, yeah. you, you're talking about uh, I think on the road the Tenere is just over eight and a half grand. This is a twelve thousand pound motorcycle. Um, but in terms of concept, it's a big difference, isn't it? Huge, huge, huge difference. Now, why I, I would look at that Tenere seven hundred and think it looks yeah it looks like a great off-road bike i think that there is quite you, you, you know you are getting way more with this bike you're getting more power yes you know you're getting another 25 horsepower um you're getting uh more rider modes you're yeah. getting more more and probably better electronics i, I mean you're getting more suspension i think this is going to ride better and, and uh, off-road probably probably uh, obviously not having not ridden them both but I think in terms of the on-road you know they're both big bikes I'd want 95 horsepower I, I, I get I mean you know you say you reserve judgment on the BMW I would reserve judgment on the Tenere until I had the chance to ride it it's difficult to say that this bike has an absolutely direct competitor yeah. but I think in concept it's it's more similar to the 700 Tenere than it is yeah. any other bike currently on sure, sale. Sure. But you're right, you know, in terms of the the um, the, the suite of electronics, the, the you know the the the, uh, the hardware that comes on this bike, that 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 would explain why it is more expensive. Um, and I, and I think it would perform better off road, and it will perform better off road. But again, at at, at a price, I think the yeah. Tenere makes a really strong argument uh, too. One hundred percent, and that's why people are so excited about it. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. So I, th so I think they're both, the the you know they they're both going to be great bikes. It's oh. just, it's just you know, I would view this as a more premium. Oh, uh, absolutely, uh, 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 without without question. And and you know, again, we, we've obviously talked to the to the guys at KTM and. You know the market has responded, and they're basically sold out of these, aren't they? In the UK, yeah. I mean that that kind of speaks volumes, doesn't it, for its sure. appeal for for the marketplace that it sits in. Um, it's clearly an incredibly popular bike, and we, now we know why. What this bike does do is offer you, and, and I, we we keep using the same word compromise, but a a nice balance between something that is genuinely capable off road. Mm. And again, I know we, we've referenced this. You can you can you can look at Aaron's review in his previous video. But something that you can actually sit on the road and ride for a good period of time. You know, if you were, if you wanted to go touring, I know we've talked about this as well. You know, you're going to the south of Spain. You're going to do a bit of off roading when you get there. Is there a better bike in the market that is going to be as capable as this? I don't think there is. Not right now. So that's been our review of the KTM 790 Adventure R. I'm a real fan. I've got to agree. It's a pretty good bike, isn't it? There's no doubts. Yeah, it is. So look, hope you've enjoyed that one. Please like, please comment, uh, please subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos like this and uh, hit your notification bell as well so you get uh, notified when we do upload something. Um, so thanks again and we'll see you next time.